What's up guys, Mark, we're in the Jeep lab today, and this is gonna be update number three on the dreaded oil cooler for the Jeep Wrangler, JK. Possibly JL. Stay tuned. So we are back, I um, guess you could say update number three, part number three on the oil cooler for the Jeep JK Wrangler. Um, we've talked a lot about just uh, the obvious problem. We've talked a lot about um, the aluminum one, uh, you know, my opinion on that. But recently, recently, um, I've actually talked to the dealerships and uh, we've kind of had some conversations on it and there's some new things I'm finding as more and more kits come out. So for those of you to kind of catch you up to speed, we all know the oil cooler is down in the middle of the motor. It's common that it leaks. Let's go. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it goes and it's a lot. Um, and then a lot of people kind of think it's due to the heat that's down in there. Um, uh, there's some warpage. There's some cracks that people are saying. Um, you know, I've spoke on the seals going bad, uh, and that's something that brought up an interesting topic when I was talking to one of the local dealers and I said, Hey man, you know, I've kind of switched my mantra from just doing a whole entire cooler on these, um, when I'm not finding any obvious cracks. Now, again, you know, we're cleaning these up pretty well. We're inspecting them, uh, to see exactly what's going on with them. And if I'm not seeing cracks, I've basically proposed to my customers said, Hey, listen, you got an aluminum one we can do, we got an OEM one we can do, or we can just get some OEM seals, try that out. And, you know, instead of, you know, buying the part, labor, unfortunately, is going to be the same, but we might be able to save you a couple hundred bucks by doing just the seals. And I do kind of put the risk on me as the shop, you know, um, so, you know, if I do it, they come back two weeks later, hey, Mark, it's still leaking. Okay. You know, they do have to at that point buy the cooler, but I'll eat the labor because that was my decision on trying to, uh, you know, save them a couple bucks. Um, some people may agree or disagree with that, but that's just what I do. You know, try to save them a couple bucks, fair honest. And then, you know, in the end, um, if, if I made that judgment call and it turns out that I was wrong, then I will eat the labor. So um, the seals is a big thing, guys. And I, I, I've got a couple here that I can show you. I mean, these seals, when you pull them out on the bottom, are pretty much flat. Uh, and, and talking with the dealer, um, I said, Hey man, you know, I, I told him what I started to do. And they said, you know what, Mark, uh, I don't know who else has heard this, but this dealer, this person worked at a dealership told me that for a while Mopar was telling them that that's all they could do. So when you were taking it to the dealer and getting the oil cooler housing or the oil cooler fixed, that's what they were actually doing is they were putting seals on it, not a new cooler in there. They said that they would have to do the seals, put it back in the Jeep, send it home with the customer. If the customer came back with the same problem, then they had to put in to get authorization to put in an entire new cooler. So here's a couple kits, a little variation here. These two are pretty much the same um, from the old Chrysler logo on there. Uh, but you notice this one actually came out of Jeep and it's a little bit different. And see all this pink stuff? This one was actually leaking coolant, not oil. Most of the time we're seeing the oil on these guys. But down in that engine bay, about a half inch of crystallized coolant was in the bottom all the way around this thing. Uh, and with that one, you know, you can see the gaskets are gone here. The O-ring uh, is gone on there. But with all of this buildup around there, I couldn't make a clear decision that it was just these guys. I mean, this stuff is all over the place. This actually looks like it comes apart at one point. So I decided to put a whole new cooler in for this gentleman here. Um, this one here, I mean, you can see slight rays on that, but look at this here. I mean, that is, that is flat. Can you see that? That is pretty much flat. This guy is pretty bad as well. This has a little bit of lip to it. That one does too. It's odd shape though. Um, this one here is pretty much flat. That one's still pretty good, pretty good. And again, this one is almost completely flat. So, you know, these kits here, you can actually get these O-ring kits for like 40, 50 bucks. 
these o-ring kits you know five pieces in there um there are a couple different variations so make sure you get the right one for your year but this is what i've started to do guys i've started to actually just do these seal kits and knock on wood somewhere i have not had one come back yet so the big thing what i'm doing is i'm looking for cracks i'm looking for warpage uh, of the actual housing itself and then i'm making the call to do the seals or to do an entire cooler with that being said, uh, you know, there are other gaskets in there in the plenum that a lot of people are replacing at the same time. Yes, usually cleaning up the injectors um, and the O-rings. Yes, uh, while you've got it out, you, you know, you could opt to do um, coolant temp sensor, oil pressure switch uh, at the same time as well. So yes, I do recommend that. But uh, I hope this helps someone, maybe those of you who are on a tight budget or don't find anything wrong with the cooler, you want to get a set of seals and just try to do that. That may be something uh, that might be worth your while than trying to, to try out. I actually went today and I did another JK oil cooler. And what I found um, this time was in the past, these oil coolers came with the sensors already in them. And they came with the, you know, the new O-rings for the cooler. You did have to buy the plenum stuff separate. Uh, and then they went to um, now you get them. They don't actually have the sensors on them, which is great because the price came down because you know, they were charging a lot for those little sensors. I find that you can get them at your local auto parts store and they work fine. Um, but today I picked one up and I found this very interesting. The box looks like it had been opened, right? So I was like, okay, did someone already, you know, put this, take it and put it back. So I actually opened it up. And what I found was a piece of paper and this little piece of paper came with another little baggie, which is now empty because I did the install, but it is saying it looks like someone came in, obviously it's a Stellantis, that someone came in after the fact and added an O-ring to change out an O-ring. So there's a black one on it right now, and it says you, the 2014 to 21 OFA assemblies use a smaller diameter O-ring on the oil, oil inlet nipple. So that's the part closest to the grill that pops down in there. That is a first. So is this Stellantis saying that, hey, this is the O-ring? I don't know. But out of all the oil coolers I've done, probably a hundred of them, this is the first time I've seen this come out of a factory box. So is Jeep trying to figure these things out still? Did they find that? I don't know. I want you guys to comment below. Anybody else seen that? And what other stuff are you guys doing? Seems like the Dormans now have dropped in price and availability is, uh, is pretty easy. Um, last I looked, an entire oil cooler, yes, you have to build them, but entire oil, oil cooler, plenum gaskets was like next day ship from Amazon for 205 bucks. Now that's the one that comes with everything. Dorman also has a kit, which was like the initial kit that they started with, where it's just the lower housing and the new gaskets. You actually take the cooler from your your old one and put that on there the aluminum part um, so you kind of pair them together so that was a little bit cheaper back in the day um, but it looks like now everything is a complete kit for Dorman again if you go with the Mopar it used to come with all your switches um, and sensor now you have to pay for those separately get them separately so looks like the oil cooler stuff is still kind of evolving and still kind of changing and I think in my last video I talked about how um, a couple of people have called me and said that they're doing these on the JL as well. But uh, I wanted to make this video because I did see a couple new changes to these and how we're getting the parts. It seems like these Dorman ones are pretty easily accessible at the local auto parts stuff, uh, parts store for right now. So that's nice to hear. Uh, my dealer typically has them in stock right now here local in Tampa. So that's nice um, for me because again, I'm opening these up. I'm making an executive decision on whether or not I can just pass with doing the seals on them, saving the customer some money and sending them on the road. So um, I hope this helps you guys uh, and ladies. If you guys are interested in doing the oil cooler, again, it's not something that's really hard. It's just a little tedious if you've never done it before. Um, you know, I think you need an inverted uh, eight millimeter Torx is kind of the only specialty tool that I would say you'd need pliers, 10 millimeters, eight millimeters, a um, couple clips. Uh, pullers, whatnot. But uh, again, something you guys can do on your own. So hope this video helps somebody. Thanks as always, guys. Don't forget, like, subscribe, uh, and we'll see you on the next one.